Well, welcome back YouTube. It's been a while since I did a video and got some good weather. I got some spraying done and some seeding done and a little bit of work. So I figured I'd get back after this a little bit so I could try to get out of this bay and get some other equipment in here. Been messing around with this, getting some linkage set. I know I'm using all the old pins and some of that hardware for now, but it seems to be working. I do have the new linkage built for the brake. I don't like how this threaded as a half inch longer than what I wanted. So I think uh, the other one I'm going to cut down to five and a half inches instead of six. Figure that extra quarter inch of threading wouldn't matter, but he's just kind of threaded mad poorly, I'll say. But a couple of things I don't like. That pin has a lot of slop in it. So I might get a different pin and machine it down to fit in there a little tighter. I can't clamp it down on there, but if I can kind of take some of it out, maybe put a shim in there. I don't know, just kind of help it. Because all that pedal has to do is rock back and forth. So there it is released. Everything's set. When the pedal goes up, it engages, but all my stuff here is clearing. Once again, I'm gonna put all new pins on it, but I'm just gonna kind of slap it together for the moment and get it rolling out of here. I got the, uh, it's not really a thermostat housing. Maybe I'll say a water elbow, but it's also the fuel tank support right here. Those two bolts go there and there's a bracket that comes across the supports the fuel tank. So I needed that. I got my breather pipe that's on there. I got a clamp that'll go on that. So just kind of getting a few things buttoned on it just to make it mobile. I'm not going to put coolant back in it. I'm not going to run it long enough to worry about heating the block up just enough to get it on the trailer and then get it to where I can wash off the undercarriage, get a bunch of the hardware and bolts and stuff like that put on. But I will get the seat station and all that set back on for now. I got a bunch of new bolts to use, put to get back in, but it's kind of going with some of that at the moment. So we do have a special visitor today. Showed up after a week of being gone. Yeah, it's my fuel tank. Has a level sending unit put in there. I had it in that 7K welding. And he put a unit in there. He had to kind of put it in a sump. The hood on this unit rides flush across the top. So I had him put in. It was kind of his brainchild how to do it. But I just provided the sending unit and he did the rest and recessed it down in there and he pressure tests it, make sure there's no leaks and does a really good job for me. So that's my plug for Andy at 7K Welding. But I'm excited now I got the fuel tank where I can get it painted, primed and painted and sealed up and the interior is really nice on it. Looks really good, clean in there. So this is the dual tank. This one here is one where you can start it on gasoline and then, oh, excuse me, you start it on gasoline and then switch it to diesel or kerosene, typically kerosene back then in 42. So, cause gasoline was rationed. So that's how this unit would function. And that's why you have the G here or the K there for your kerosene. So you take that plate and you flip it over one way or other. I've covered that in previous videos, but that just goes to show the ingenuity they had back then, but it would run the kerosene through the carburetor and run it just as everything would stay the same elsewhere on it. As far as I know, if I'm wrong, somebody that's ran these, I know quite a few of you commented that you've ran these and you might have better insight by all means, reach out to me and tell me, set me straight if I'm wrong. I don't want to spread misinformation. So, and if you guys have any stories of running these or anything like that, feel free, post it in the comments. I do, I read every one of them. I try to reply where I can. I appreciate everything I get from you guys. You guys are awesome. My son loves reading them and asking questions about what you guys are talking about in them, so. Okay, so one thing I found here, this is my brake band adjustment nut here. It's got a half moon cup on it, so it sits in there against this uh, 
It's a rod that says you spin it, it does 180 turns. So it's a half nut adjustment each time. And what I found is I had to back that way, way, way off to get my linkage to connect down there. Because it had this rod sticking way up here. So accentuated out. Let me hang on a sec here. This is my play weld one that I did. That rod sat way up like that versus the other one. And what I was having an issue is I couldn't get any of my linkage connected. So I had to back that way off. And right now I have both of these set to where these will go. And they'll lock in on the third notch there. Now I know that's not the book way to do it. But it's just a quick way for right now to kind of get them close. And connect them together. So... And I added, I got this panel, I straightened it up fairly decent, a few little whips in there, but it's still the original panel. Just got two bolts back there and these two up here I'll get tightened up. Um, I'm not going to worry about hanging any of the front shroud stuff at this time on it because uh, I want most access to wash as much as I can in there. I'm really not happy with how much as these back ones are going to cover, but... I need to be able to drive this safely, and I got to do that from the driver's seat to do that. Um, like I said, I'm just going to drive it up on the trailer. I've tried winching them. They are heavy. They're awkward. There's too much that can go silly with them. So I figured if I can drive it on the trailer and then maybe have my fine assistant running the winch too, just to help kind of keep everything straight and under control. Because I'm still kind of new to driving the cats. I mean, I run most anything else, but they're kind of a fun thing to load up on steel ramps. So, but if I can uh, get this on the trailer, then I'll just get it on in. And biggest thing is I want to get all of that track carriage all cleaned up. That's why I haven't put the spring in on this side. There's just so much dirt and debris that I want to get out of there first. And I had this all clean, but this was just. All, everything you see on the tracks is just from when I tracked it into this building from around the corner over here. I brought it on in and tracked it in and that's everything that muddied up on there. So I want to get it on the trailer to where I can uh, wash it up really clean. Don't have a lot of dirt, dust or anything like that flying around on it. And then what I'll probably end up doing is I'll probably put it in this middle bay here. Stack it in here. I'll move that stuff out of the way. I can leave it close to the door. And then um, what I've done in the past for painting is I've hung plastic off of the rails all the way around and on forward on that building on that there. Just to kind of help keep some of the overspray down inside here when I go to start painting on it. It's small enough it should fit in here pretty good. But that's my plan anyways. And that opens my big bay because I got three tractors I got to get in and get it serviced. Or two tractors that need service before my haying season really kicks off. So, I'm going to shoot a little wrap-up video. Kind of show the progress of putting some of it back together. I'm not putting all the bolts and hardwares and plate in. Like I said, just enough to get it loaded on a trailer to get the undercarriage and track carriage and all that stuff cleaned up so we got the brake pedals in I actually put bolts down in these oh, excuse me and as you can see that's a special quarter inch bolt there that's a thin head baby there so and then that's just standard and same thing got one up on top there behind the pedal I gotta look this plate here is bent pretty bad a lot of this upper seat stuff I don't know it's kind of hard to see but it's all pretty twisted and warped and there's a lot of stress cracks this whole seam underneath here has been uh welded up so these bottom ones here i got sh pretty straight but i'm contemplating on maybe the long run of doing full replacement of all the panels i don't know but i was also looking at maybe trying to go to a three sixteenths or a like maybe quarter inch plating 
just to maybe stout it up a little bit. I'm not worried about weight really, but just to kind of give it a little bit more rigidity on some of the longer panels, maybe even the seat stuff. I'm really tall, but I have a hard time reaching the brake pedals if my back is against this. And I'm assuming there's some sort of foam cushions that go all the way around for full seat operator surround. Um, I don't know any of the dimensions because obviously I didn't have any of that. But if anybody wanted to reach out and or had pictures or something, they can please post them in the comments or let me know. If, I was thinking at least if I could do six to maybe eight inches of padding against this back, that would just help push me forward a little bit to give a little better seat position for the pedals and everything else. But I don't know. And maybe I'll know more as I run it a little bit, kind of figure out what I want. So this one's just sitting here. I haven't put any bolts in it, but I like that it kind of looks like a crawler now instead of just a lump of iron sitting in the shop. The tracks are a cursing and a blessing at the same time. It's a great bench when you're working on it, but it, you got to reach over those things the entire time. And there's a couple of these corners like this guy right here is, and this guy, these are razor sharp on these two points. And I've tore my coveralls a few times on them, but that kind of, kind of feels like some progress made. I know everything's going to come back off again, but at least it'll uh, get me a little closer. I think I'm going to try to get the tank painted get that everything done on that 100% so that way when it comes time to so once I put fuel in there then I don't ever have to really worry about cleaning it up enough to paint it and do any of that so I'm trying to avoid having to re-clean it to paint it so I'll have to break out the paint guns because I think I'm going to mix up some primer to do it that way and I might shoot a bunch of other parts and pieces too with primer while I have it all off I got a bunch of stuff sandblasted here it all has to be done, so I might hang a bunch of it out once I get that primer in the gun, and I just might go to town on a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to call it a night. I'll post this video up. Thanks for watching.